Uh, okay, so before I start my speech, let me ask you, how many of you believe that today you can start a company or you can be an entrepreneur? Just a show of hands. Okay, that's a few, 10 or 15. But believe me, by the end of the speech, all of you will believe you can be an entrepreneur. Last month, I attended an entrepreneurship program at MIT called MIT Launch. During that program, I learned a lot about entrepreneurship, about the different products, how to run a startup, product life cycles, marketing, sales. But more than that, I learned what truly entrepreneurship is and not to be afraid of entrepreneurship. First of all, entrepreneurship itself is a big word. It's quite scary. Much like paniculation, which is a huge word for yawning, or the horizontal superimposition of multiple real numbers, which is a huge made-up definition of addition. Entrepreneurship itself is a big word that scares people. And then we come to entrepreneurs. When I say entrepreneur, who do you think of? Most likely it's these people. Steve Jobs, Elon Musk, Mark Zuckerberg, Bill Gates. All of them were reinvented the world, made huge companies that changed our own lifestyle. Household names from Apple to Google to Facebook. People who invented new products. What I want to do is change this perception of an entrepreneur. Yes, these people are great entrepreneurs, but they are not the only on definition of an entrepreneur. What I want to do is bring, these, bring an entrepreneur into a normal life, show that even you can be entrepreneurs. Let's start off with an idea. Most people think entrepreneurship is having a great idea, having an idea that can change the world. But let's look at some of these ideas. The first one, the world needs yet another social network in the style of MySpace or Friendster except several years late. We really open it to a few thousand overworked, anti-social Ivy Leaguers. Everyone else will follow it because Harvard students are so cool. Now, what's this company? Facebook. Yeah, it's Facebook. Obviously. Let's look at the second idea. We'll sell books online, even though users are still scared to use credit cards on the web. Their shipping costs will eat up any money they save. They lose for convenience, even though they have to wait a week for the book. Amazon. It's clearly Amazon. You can read the next two ideas. They describe Google building the world's 20th search engine when, every, when all the other search engines have been abandoned as commoditized money losers. And fourth one, Tesla. Instead of building batteries and selling them to Detroit, they build their own cars from scratch plus the distribution network. Now, none of these ideas seem that great, but yet they all came to become huge, big companies. Now, my purpose here is not to rubbish these ideas, to say, you know, these ideas are not great, but to show that entrepreneurship or making a big company is more than just an idea. Yes, your idea at start may seem rubbish. People may say it's horrible, but it's a lot more than an idea. It's about how you market it, how you sell it, people behind it. Tesla was driven by Elon Musk, his drive and passion, and Google by their new strategy and their company culture. Let's look at an example of Apple, perhaps the most famous brand in the world. They never made so much better computers, much better, much better than Windows, the great computers, but they built a brand, a brand based on simplicity and user design, to make it as simple as possible for the user, and that's how they built it. Let's look at an ad from oh, there. Man, a PC. You know, there are tons and tons of PCs out there, so I brought the whole range by to help find the one that's best for her. A lot of PCs. So what do you want? Well, I want a computer with a big screen. Okay, small screen, speed it. What else? Well, I want it to have a fast processor. Okay, slow PCs, go. What else? I just need something that works without crashing or viruses or a ton of headaches. Did you say no viruses or crashes or headaches? Yeah. Uh, she's all your... Hi, how are you? Good. I'm a Mac. I'm a Megan. <laughs> so, so as you can see, Mac didn't mention their computer at all. They didn't say how good it was. They didn't say it had the best processor in the world. They built it on a brand, saying we give you the simplest user experience. If you use ours, you won't have any problems. So as you can see here, entrepreneurship can be more than an idea. It's the way they target the customer, the way they solve the need for the customer. Entrepreneurship, in a case, can be business models. Nowadays, if you see Uber and Airbnb, they don't own any cars. Airbnb doesn't own any hotels or rooms, but yet they're one of the biggest companies in the housing and the taxi industry. So right now I'm trying to demonstrate that entrepreneurship is a huge wide range of things. In its inherent state, it's a movement to cause change more than 
or big idea, oh, I have a patent on a new invention. Entrepreneurship is solving the need in the best way so that you can solve the problem for the customer and you can cause change. Let's look at further examples to show how wide the scope of entrepreneurship is. These people are as great entrepreneurs as the four people in the previous slide. But how many of you know them? Any one of them? None? Okay, but the first one is Richard Turrell. He gave one of the best TED Talks I've seen, uh, where he described how he, as a 13-year-old Maasai boy, wanted to safeguard his livestock with the cattle from the tigers at night. He discovered that when there was a flashing light, the tigers didn't come. What he did was he went to pass from generators, radios, and assembled a flashlight that flashed constantly throughout the night. The second and third one is Mohammed Yunus and Scott Harrison. They're social entrepreneurs. Mohammed Yunus is the founder of Grameen Bank, which I'm sure some of you have heard of. Grameen Bank specializes in loans for poor farmers and started off in Bangladesh. Scott Harrison is the founder of Charity Water. He gave one million Africans free clean drinking water. And Stripe is a great entrepreneurial startup, but it works in the back end. It processes payments and is similar to PayPal. Maybe that's why you haven't heard of it. But the point I'm trying to make through all of this is that entrepreneurship is just more than an idea. It's a mindset. How all these people have one thing in common. They have a mindset to solve the problem, to make change in the world. And that's what really entrepreneurship is about. For me, it's perhaps this mindset is summed up in the words uh, uh, that my mentor at launch really liked. The relentless pursuit of opportunity without regard to resources controlled. This sums up the mindset of entrepreneurship. Though, to an extent, uh, it does make me feel that every time I jaywalk, I'm an entrepreneur, as I have a relentless pursuit of the other side of the road without regard to the traffic light state, which the resources control. But more than that, entrepreneurship is the mindset of a go-getter and much more. Let me elaborate, illustrate this through a certain example. Uh, before I went to launch, I had a prototype app which I wanted to make into a company. Its aim was to save food. It was to connect bakeries to consumers at the end of the day so that they can sell their perishables. But I always thought that I'm only a kid. All the bakeries are going to listen to me. I go to a store, they're going to refer me to a chain of command, and nobody's going to listen to me. Or I don't know how to code this. I don't know how to do that. How do I do it? But then I realized entrepreneurship is about doing what you can and finding out ways to work the other parts out. Don't ever think you can't code it. Nowadays, with the resources available to you, you can find templates online which you can buy for $20. You can code an e-commerce platform for $20. You can code something similar to Amazon with no coding experience for $20. So that's what entrepreneurship is really about. It's about overcoming these boundaries and feeling confident in yourself that you do what you can and find help from others. With this entrepreneurial mindset, in fact, I was introduced to something else. The power of reaching out to people and the power that people give you when they help you. Cold calling and just talking to people. This guy's name is Jalen Bledsoe. When he was 13 years old, he wanted to find he wanted to found a company named Bletzer Technologies, an IT consulting company. But of course, he was only really 13, he had no experience. So what he did was he went and cold called, found the numbers on the internet, cold called 20 lawyers. He called them repeatedly. He was just a 13 year old, he just called them and asked them for help, saying I have this idea, I want to set it up. 19 of them obviously rejected him, but one of them listened. And one of them helped him do it pro bono, for free. Just by calling people, he was able to found the company for free. How great is that? That's what entrepreneurship is about. Having the confidence to reach out, do what you can do, and have the passion and initiative to get your passion started. I found this, I had a similar experience at launch. When founding the company uh, called Virtuescape that I was working on at launch, we needed to talk to realtors. So what we did was, we went to Boston, or around Cambridge, and talked to 20 realtors just went into their office and talked to them. Most of them rejected us, but one of them listened. And we were able to do a pilot study there. So that's the power of just going out and talking to people, and like reaching out with your passion and drive. 
And that's what I've come to realize entrepreneurship is really about. But with this entrepreneurial mindset, something amazing happens. With this mindset, with if everybody, every single one of you happens, has this mindset, you create an entrepreneurial environment. And let me talk about why that's so great. In Boston, there's a, a foundation called the Venture Cafe. Every Thursday, from 3 to 5, or 3 to 7, people just go and talk. From startup founders, to venture capitalists, to people who have expertise in fields. They just go there and talk. You pitch your idea, you talk to other people. And all these people have this entrepreneurial mindset there. And you get help. For example, one of my, or uh, one of the other teams that launched needed help with data protection. They went to the venture cafe, they found an expert who has a job dealing with data protection. And what happened? He gave them the structure, the layout, from needing to pay $10,000 to figure out how to sort out data, the venture cafe helped them find it for free. And that's what happens when all of you have this entrepreneurial mindset, the go-getter mindset to solve the problems you see everywhere, to take the initiative and find out how to do it. Find your way around the problem. So, when this happens, what happens is that you form a community which can help you. Right now in Singapore, I know that perhaps it's not as open as sharing. In Asia in general, we're more risk averse, which is why we don't have much debt. And the US has about $14 trillion in debt. So, but we can change it. If we all have this entrepreneurial mindset, we can all become entrepreneurs and help each other become entrepreneurs. We don't need to go to Harvard or Stanford or drop out of Harvard or Stanford to become an entrepreneur. All you need is an entrepreneurial mindset. And that's what amazed me after going to launch. And that's why I believe all of you can become entrepreneurs. Just have the mindset and the confidence in yourself. Believe in yourself that you can find a way around the problem. And if you can't talk to people, they'll always help you. Thank you.